Howdy, good morning. Welcome to an of morning ago. Uh, presented by Boudreaux's Bloody Mary Mix, Margarita Mix, Boudreaux's Mix.com, Boudreaux's Mix.com. Hope y'all had a great weekend. Uh, yeah, so doing the show from the car and a little bit later today, so apologize for that. For the uh, for those of you who always expected, you know, seven twenty, seven thirty ish from the office, but a little bit of a late night. Drew uh, woke up in the middle of the night screaming, and then he, his morning was a little thrown off, so I had to get him ready to get out of the house this morning. Um, and we always have a Monday morning meeting downtown at eight. Uh, I'm sorry, at nine o'clock. So it got to the point where I just I had to get in the car and get going. So anyway, uh, apologize for the uh, apologies for being late and apologize for the shaky camera because we are in transit as I mentioned. I uh, normally love to say all my hellos to everybody, but uh, I'm not gonna be able to look down because I'm driving. So I'll just kind of casually as I can look down and look for comments as I stop. So um, Ed Ozerl press conference today at noon. So we are 12:30 actually. So we'll hear from, from uh, Eddie O previewing the LSU Florida game. Um, LSU opens up as a two and a half point favorite, which I think is about right. Uh, well, that's a good idea. Blake Rafina said Tim Tebow is the guest picker. It's not a bad idea, Blake. I'll pass along your suggestion to Mr. Terry. What about what about Steve Spurrier? Tebow Spurrier? Tebow or Spurrier? Maybe one of them. Are they in town this week? Is it, I, don't, I can't remember if SEC Nation is coming to Baton Rouge this week. If they are, Tebow will be here. It might work. It might actually work. Uh, anyway, think about that. Emmett Smith, maybe. I don't know. Think about it. Um, so LSU opens up as a uh, two-and-a-half-point favorite, which I think is about right. So I'll come back to that in a sec. Uh, Saints get a win yesterday. So I was thinking about this with the Saints, man. Like, it certainly hasn't looked like we thought it would look right? Um, they draft Davenport. They bring in Demario Davis at linebacker. Uh, they go sp- spend a lot of money on Kirk Coleman at safety. <clears throat> and you feel like, all right, well, they were, they were good on defense last year. They weren't a dominant defense, but you know, they were a top half of the league, which is all you really need in New Orleans. And they went out in free agency and they got better at every, and the draft, and got better at every level of the defense. And so when you're thinking like, all right, they're going to be better, and you come out the shoot and they just get blitzed by Tampa, uh, and then you need a damn miracle to beat Cleveland, you know, and then you need overtime and 40 points to beat Atlanta. Uh, you know, I I understand all the the, the trepidation and everything about that. Um, Uh, but man, I, part of me looks at it and says, and, I, and I've said this before on the show and probably here too, but I mean, for me, I just, I believe that when you get Mark Ingram back, it changes the dynamic of the whole team, both sides of the ball. If you're able to run the ball, that aids your defense. That's an age old theory, but it's true. Best defense is a good offense and you can play ball control. And I wonder how different that Tampa game is if the Saints run the ball 50 times instead of throwing it 50 times, and you're able to keep that Tampa Bay offense on the sideline, you know, and, and keep them out of their rhythm. So I, I don't know. I also saw, uh, saw on Twitter last night that when the team, the Saints, got back to New Orleans at midnight, and uh, Mark Ingram was there waiting to greet him. So he's, you can tell, your boy's ready to go, man. Um, that's that's exciting to think that you're you're three and one, you're heading into a home game prime time, Monday night football in the Dome, where Drew Brees is going to break Peyton Manning's career passing record. Uh, it's going to be an awesome, an awesome night. You're going to be a big favorite as it is, and you get essentially, it's like it's like a, it's like the trade deadline. You know, you get Mark Ingram. Like, you get to add a running back to a team that's already 3-1. and one. So, I'm pretty fired up for it, man. And like I said, it's, it hasn't looked like I think we all thought it would have looked, but the result is the same. Like I, I would have assumed if you're, you know, taking your schedule at the beginning of the season and you're scribbling W's and L's on the on the, the schedule, I'm I'm saying they beat Tampa, Cleveland, lose at Atlanta probably, and then you hope they win in New York and go three and one. But even if they hold serve at home and go two and two, you're okay through that first quadrant of the season. 
so the fact that they're three and one, regardless of how it looks, has put them in a great position, and they and they lead the division outright. Atlanta's one and three. You know, they lost that opening night to Philly. Uh, they lost yesterday to lost to New Orleans. Of course, they lost yesterday to Cincinnati, where you know AJ, Andy Dalton hits AJ Green with six seconds left on a beautiful pass to win the game by a point. So, Saints got a ton of help there, and you know Tampa sucks apparently. So, uh, the the Fitz magic is gone. They even played Jameis yesterday. Um, they just got bludgeoned by by the Bears. So, anyway, I, it's a good day to wake up and be a Saints fan because man, I I think you got. At three and one, with Ingram coming back, you're feeling really good. Uh, and the other thing, I, I'm gonna—I think I'm gonna do this on air today. Not, I am gonna do it on air today, but I'll—I'll I'll try it out here first. So let me know, let me know your thoughts on this, okay? So I—I I just have a complete football man crush on Alvin Kamara. Like I just—I'm—I'm I'm so giddy that he's on the team that I love, and I get to watch him forever. Uh, you know, for at least as long as he's he's what he is, and it's just like he's so dynamic in every phase of the game. It's like every time he touches the ball, you you hold your breath and think, okay, like is he is he going to do something magnificent? Like the the second touchdown that he had, when it looked like his knee went down, but he put his hand down, managed to keep his knee up, and like lunged at the goal line. It's just it's amazing how good that guy is, you know, and, um, you know, Romo said it yesterday on the broadcast, it's like he's gliding, you know, it's, it's not like he's running, there's, there's some truth to it, it's so fluid, it's almost like a cartoon, um, but I was thinking about this last night, I think Alvin Kamara is what Saints fans thought they were getting in Reggie Bush, like, a guy that impacts the game in every way. He's dynamic between the tackles. He can get to the edge. He's a fantastic pass catcher. He had double-digit receive receptions last week. Uh, if you need him in the return game, you feel like you have an immediate advantage with him back there. You know, Reggie turned out to be a, a really good pro, but when he was taken second overall and all that expectation and I remember that college season when you know the 05 season when it was basically everyone was calling it the Reggie Bush sweepstakes to see who was going to get get the draft Reggie well the Texans end up with the first overall pick and they take Mario Williams I mean you all know the history now but it, it and Reggie became a solid like a really solid pro but it feels like Camara is the manifestation of the expectation that I know that I had, and I think that we all had, for Reggie Bush when he was drafted. Is that, let me know if you think that makes sense. I think that, um, I, I was just thinking about that last night. So, anyway, um, sorry. Uh, anyway, so Saints are at home this week. Drew Brees needs like 211 yards to break Peyton Manning's career passing record, which he'll do on, on Monday night, on Monday night football in the Dome, prime time. It, it's just going to be an, an awesome, awesome night. So um, that's really, that's really, really cool. Uh, all right, so got some LSU stuff here as well. Um, so Tigers are two and a half point favorite at Florida. I think that's about right. Um, you know, I think neutral field, yeah, LSU's probably, you know, feel a little bit of field goal a little bit better because it's at the swamp. You know, you're going to get Florida probably three points for that. Um, and I, you know, we'll we'll talk about the game so much this week, but there's some there's one angle that I know I'm going to talk about a lot, and it's it's Todd Grantham. Uh, I I know I mentioned it a little bit on the show last year. I mentioned last week. I mentioned on pregame show as well. Um, And, um, damn, traffic. But, uh, t- so Todd Grantham is, is Florida's defensive coordinator, and he's known for bringing a ton of pressure. That's that's his style. Uh, 
Actually, they they ended the game, Florida did, against Mississippi State on Saturday, if you are watching it, on, you know, State had a fourth down play, Grantham brought a delayed blitz, and linebacker just crushed Nick Fitzgerald. Um, their defensive front with C.C. Jefferson is is so much better. He was suspended the first couple of games of the season. Um, that was a guy that LSU was really hoping they'd get a few years back, uh, but it ended up signing with Florida. But he's a pretty dynamic player, um, and he was suspended the first couple of games. He's back now. Um, but uh, Grantham is one of those guys that brings pressure. He's a really good defensive coordinator. And last year, he's, he was the D.C. at Mississippi State, of course, and they beat LSU soundly and really gave Danny Etling a lot of problems. And in 2016, he was the D.C. at Louisville, and, of course, LSU played them in the bowl game. And if you LSU won, and I think everybody, what everybody remembers from that game is it was Arden Key just with a million sacks in that game. I think LSU had like nine sacks in that game. But um, if you go back and actually watch it, man, that Louisville's defense did a lot to to contain Etling and confuse him. So I'm I'm curious, man, because they've seen Grantham now the past two years, and and he's done well against LSU. So you know, I think Florida's opportunity to win this game is. You keep is basically what LSU's recipe was when they went to Auburn. You know, you keep it low scoring. You try to play field position. Uh, you, know, you see a little possession here or there. You know, and you hope you you got a close game. You know, I I think for LSU, their hope is, man, you take advantage of of that Florida defense, like Kentucky did in Gainesville, and that wasn't even close. That what Kentucky did was they play power football. So I'll be very interested to see if this LSU team, you know, without guys, without Fournette, can can go play that style of game. Um, and another thought is, man, well, if Kentucky can do it, LSU can do it. But I'm telling you, Benny Snell is a better running back than anybody LSU's got. There's no disrespect to those guys. Benny Snell is just a good back. Like, he's an NFL back now. Um, you know, and you saw... In Mississippi State, which uh, which has two really good running backs as well, with Hill and Williams, and they really got got stuffed by uh, by Florida's defensive front on Saturday. So I think it's a big challenge. I Man, I think anytime you go to Gainesville, it's a challenge. I, I, I mean, I know. Fa- thank God, finally, this is the end of the, the Hurricane Matthew stuff. We put that to bed forever. But um, you know, LSU is going back there for to Gainesville for the second consecutive year. They were there last year and won by point seventeen sixteen. So they got to go back again. Uh, Florida's honoring its 08 national championship team, uh, which I know a lot of people are viewing that as as disrespectful. I don't. I mean, it's it's no different than LSU honoring its fifty eight team on the on the Ole Miss game because it's it's appropriate and relevant and all. Um, and if you look at Florida's home schedule this year, this is the biggest game on their home schedule. So I don't I don't think it's a a big deal or disrespectful at all that um, that uh, that Florida's honoring their their 08 team while uh, well while LSU's in town is probably the right thing to do. Um, now, Paul, I, I just glanced at some Paul talking about Franks. Now that is so that is where LSU has an advantage in this game. So Felipe Franks is not a great quarterback. Like that's. That's not a dynamic guy that you worry about beating you, which is why Florida is hoping for to keep it as a low-scoring game and try, like I just said, basically just keep it a low-scoring game, play field position when you know, steal a possession here or there, you know, convert points when you get it. Because I think they realize, you know, really good teams. I mean, so look at Ole Miss for example this weekend. All right, you got a guy, a quarterback that's going to get drafted, and Jordan Tamu. Uh, might be projected him as a middle round pick. All right, so middle round pick, you got a a first round left tackle, two first round wide receivers, and another wide receiver that's probably going to be taken in the top sixty overall. So you got all those pros. That's a good offense. That's a good Ole Miss offense. All right, a lot of talent, can move the ball. They did a whole lot of nothing against LSU on Saturday. All right, so it's like if good offenses and and I think you know to their credit like this I know everybody wants to see LSU open up the offense and be real dynamic and, and they're starting to do more of that but I think realistically also they recognize 
that even really good offenses are going to struggle to go the length of the field against LSU time and time again. Like put together you know, eight, nine play, 75 yard drives. It's just, you just, when you think about how consistent you have to be to put together that type of a drive, where you're converting on third down, you're not committing penalties, like on nine or 10 consecutive plays, you're not committing penalties that put you behind the sticks. You don't drop a pass. Like you just, you have to be so precise to put together a drive like that. And good teams are struggling to do that against LSU. When you look at an offense that's led by Felipe Franks, it's really hard to imagine them doing it. So I think, you know, Ed and, and they all know that you can play you can play defense and, you know, be somewhat conservative. You know, I, I think uh, I'm uh I'm like stopped on I ten. This in, this interstate sucks. Uh but, you know, I think if you're Florida, like what they're hoping for is like a must champ throwback game. Like the the hammer and the nail game, the 12 to 6 or whatever it was. Like that's the kind of game Florida needs on Saturday to win. If if LSU scores into the 20s, I don't think Florida can beat them, man. I, I think if LSU can find a way to put three touchdowns on the board, I think that's enough. Um you know, but Florida's got really good athletes on defense. Their secondary is always salty, and I know their defensive front is really good, especially with CC Jefferson. So I, you know, I, I could see LSU with a, a similar type game to the Auburn game. Really, um, you know, that's the type of game that that could play out in Gainesville. It's just it's protecting the football, man. You know, I know. Talked about this a little bit in the post game show, you know, whiskey and wine, and then yesterday on uh, on morning scope. It's like, um, <laughs> from that angle, it looks like you have hair. I do have hair, man. Look, I mean, I got I got hair. I mean, I just got my bald spot on top. Um, y'all think I'm joking about that, man? Uh, if you can see my before and after, it's remar- like the PRP. It's remarkable. Uh, anyway, um, nice, A.J. Holland, Weller 12 mission underway from Chattanooga. Somebody, I think, heard me talking about it and sent me on, and I don't know who it was and if y'all are watching, but and someone, so somebody tweeted me and that the Weller uh, special reserve. I'm like, no, it's not the green label. It's the black label. It's a Weller 12. You can find it, A.J. Good on you, man. I, li- literally, as many bottles you can find that they'll let you buy, I'll take. I'm serious. Like, if someone will sell you a case, I'll buy a case of it. So, dead serious. Like, super duper serious. You have video evidence of this right here. Why is there traffic right now? It sucks. I tend sucks. Better traffic sucks, man. It sucks. Anyway. Um... Paul, at least you have more hair than Ott. Now, Ott's also 30 years older than me. But, well, 20 years older than me, I guess. Yeah, 20 years older than me. Um, let's see. I'm going back and reading some of y'all stuff. Richie said, uh, Matt had the pleasure of eating with Rashard Lawrence's dad last night. He did interview him. Um, good dude, man. I don't know Rashard's dad, but Rashard. Yeah, Paul, they don't, like, I've been to Specs in Houston. They don't have it either. Um, Specs is great, but it's like, stuff stuff like that is such, that, like, the distillery knows what they're doing. Like, they, they do a limited release, and they do that to create demand, and it's, it's smart, but it's also insanely frustrating because if it was readily available, I'd spend whatever I'd spend on it, you know, buy it. Just they just don't make mass quantities of it. You know, they just have a limited release. You got to that's that's for some part of the fun is going on the the hunt for uh, for their whiskey. I would rather just go to the store at you know in my neighborhood and just go buy it and you know, and, and be done. <laughs> Y'all are getting ridiculous with the hair comments, man. Um, 
Now that's a good comment about the Saints going, you know, doing something they haven't done, which is go three and one in the first quarter of the season. So, you know, if you break the season down into quadrants, like a lot of times you'll you'll hear coaches talk about that, like basically, obviously four four like four four game mini seasons, and the goal would be to win those those four game stretches. Um, you know, if you go three and one in each of those, and you go twelve and four, and most years you're going to win the division, and you know. A lot of years that might be the number one overall seed. So, so you went three and one there. Um, the next, the next four, I think, is tough because you're going to be on the road at Baltimore and uh, and at Minnesota. But you do get uh, Washington at home, uh, you know, week five, which I think is one that they'll win. But yes, uh, I agree. Sorry, sorry about that. Uh, Yancey, can you give your prediction on LSU Florida game? Uh, I'll do that Friday, man. Um, I'll also write it for uh, Action Network. Um, you know, I'll write some. I, I honestly haven't decided, but I'll tell you all this, man. So before the season, when I picked LSU to go seven and five, um, I I picked them to lose to Auburn, Florida, Georgia, Bama, and Texas A&M. So as of right now, I mean. The only game, I mean, I know they're ranked fifth in the country, and people are psyched out of their minds and all that good stuff. And you should be, man. It's been it's been fun. But the only game so far that's different than that's the result has been different than than what I thought at the beginning of the season is the Auburn game. You know, and you're down 11 in the fourth quarter, and managed to rally, which is awesome. I mean, good on them. Um, but it's not like you dominated that game, so. It, look, if they get past Florida, now, and, and they're favored, and I would not be surprised at all if LSU wins. Um, if they beat Florida, now you got action, man, because you're six and zero, and you're coming home against Georgia, and the stadium is going to be bad bleep crazy, and you know this past, you might be catching Georgia at a good time because this past week. You know, Fromm didn't play well. They played Fields also. Now, I know we say that, but it's like, even in spite of, of them not playing well, they still score 43 points, and they win by two touchdowns. And it's it, – it's or that was last week against Missouri, and this week they beat Tennessee like 38 to 12 or whatever. Anyway, but it's it's the measure of a really good team whenever you're blowing teams out, and they're like, oh, man, they really struggled today. Like, no, nah, they're still really good. But anyway – you beat Florida this week, you got action, man, because I think you will have an epic type atmosphere in Tiger Stadium for that Georgia game, which I'm assuming they'll announce today is going to be 2:30, which I know that sucks and nobody wants it to be a day game, but I think you know when when you're good, you're just going to play more 2:30 games. So I'd rather that than be <laughs> seven and five and playing every game at 8:15. Quite honestly, so I'm okay, I'm okay with the 2:30 games. Um, for, you know, for that reason, yes, yeah, so I'll give a, I'll give a pick on that. Uh, I'll give a pick on LSU in Florida later in the week. Um, huh? <laughs> Trivia Mecca is talking about his true passion, liquor. It's just a hobby, bro. I don't know why y'all mad about it. Get over it. Um, yeah, twelve it says twelve and four gets the division and a bye. Um, yeah, I mean it, this year absolutely will. Um, you know, but I can't help but think back to like the the twenty eleven team. You know, which is everyone says the best team the Saints ever have, which I agree. Um, you know, but they had to play they had to play a wild card round. They had to host Detroit in the wild card round that year. It's like, because I think Atlanta went 13 and three that year. So I mean, it sucks. Just there's some of that that that's just out of your control. Um, you know, well, as opposed to like in 2006, the Saints went 10 and six, won the division, and got a bye. <laughs> you know, it's just you know you just I, you never know. But just looking at the the division. It looks like Tampa's crashed back to reality. Um, 
Atlanta has had a really tough start, man, because they Atlanta could be four and zero. It just goes to show you the margin in the NFL. It's, just, it's razor thin, man. But like Atlanta had Philly beat. You know they went to overtime with the Saints, and then since he scored with six seconds yesterday to win that one in Atlanta. So I mean. I, I wouldn't put it past Atlanta to be able to rally, um, but but man, they're in a hole now, one and three, man. I mean, it's just it's when you're at one and three, man. You're you're where the Saints were all those years, man. You just you're just constantly now trying to dig yourself out. Um, it's you know, we we all know it's not an easy thing to do. All right, go to here. I'll tell you what, I got my meeting in 18 minutes. I'll do five minutes sitting in here answering y'all's questions, and then I will go inside. So five minutes, five minutes. Let's do questions for five minutes. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Hey, Christian Keller. Hope you have a good day as well. No more Man Crush Friday. <laughs> Dude, you have no idea how like our metrics on that blew up. Like you would not believe. So on Friday, Terrio and I, like, I, I don't even know how how or why. Oh, cause I had my, my scrub, it looks weird. Can I... Sorry. I should be good, okay. Um, Kathy Hernandez, good morning. Jordan said A&M won't beat this team. See, J Jordan, look. And you may be right, but here's one thing you got to remember, okay? It's October 1st. Today's October, I just checked. It's October the 1st. Like, you've got such a long way to go, man. It's just that, like, the reason that the A&M game is, is worrisome is because I believe A&M is the team in the conference that's going to improve most from week one to the end of the season with Jimbo. And you, you already see it in Kellen Mond. Like, He's he's already become a dynamic player, and I I you know we saw last year uh, Elko their Mike Elko their defensive coordinator they got from Notre Dame he did a bang up job against LSU in the bowl game last year like and he's got better he's got better talent now in College Station than he had last year in South Bend so anyway and that's in College Station and it's the last week of the season and you don't really know what teams could be playing for so again my point is like just like let it let it play out with all that, but that's a that's a tricky spot, man. Because A and M is going to be much. They're already much better this year than they than any of the teams else she's faced. Man, crush was hilarious. You see, everybody loved that man. You know, but I was seriously thinking. So like, all those guys like the national, like Steve Levy and Todd McShay and Brian Greasy, all in town to call the game. They were probably listening to us that day. Like they. Those guys turn on the local radio shows when they're in town, like just to kind of get a pulse of what people are saying, what the conversations like, see if they can pick up nuggets. Like that happens every week. So like, I was thinking like those guys, Steve Levy and McShay and Greasy and all those guys, were probably in town, turned on their radio and heard me and Terrio talking about what. what... <laughs> and they're probably like, "What the hell is this, man?" <laughs> That's funny. Anyway, uh, Terry needs to get Laura Rutledge as a celebrity guest picker. We could probably do that, but I think I think like he's going for like you know super high like A list, but we'll see. You have to wonder a bit about Georgia. They've really been tested. South Carolina to go there and win that game the way they did, and I, look, you're not going to see every team's best effort every week. Like Ellis, you've shown you that. But, like, when they needed to crank up the intensity at Auburn, they did. They were really good. When Georgia needed to crank up the intensity uh, at South Carolina, they did. They were really good. And I, and Georgia's got a lot of talent. They'll be good. Uh, Josh Long, what's Terrio's punishment for, for the guest picker failure? Uh, I think we said he was going to do, like, a Brazilian wax. Or, like, a, a, a – not Brazilian wax. Sorry. A um, uh, – the, the, the wax, ch a chest wax. The celeb that no showed was Vince Wilfork. He had Vince Wilfork lined up, and Vince texted him about ten minutes after we got off the air, and he was like, apolog like vulgarly apologetic, like, "Oh man, I'm bleeping sorry. I feel like bleep, bleep me, man. God, I can't believe I'm, you know." Anyway, 
So, but maybe we'll maybe we'll do some of Vince Vince will fork this week. Um, what's your take on the NFL rule affecting the game? Quarterback sitting in the pocket, throwing it forty times. Uh, it's an offensive game. I mean, they've everything in the hand check rule and it, like just everything. You, everything is geared toward offense now. People on offense. I doubt Terrio could land Aaron Andrews. Me neither. <laughs> Met Aaron Andrews uh, once. Let's see, Jordy and I. It was was it the cha- it was it was the LSU Alabama national championship game on the field. Um, I don't want to say anything bad. She was not super inviting, but it. Uh, but I mean, who knows? She was working, and uh, anyway. Um. tackle for loss on Barkley was freaking phenomenal, man. You see a play where he just busted, like inside move, busted in, darted out, grabbed Barkley in the backfield, and just threw him down. I was like, oh my God, was that Davenport? Like that, you, so like you saw the flash there of what he brings, man. Anyway. <laughs> oh, man. I was reading Paul's comments about his coworkers from Houston in the car. <laughs> Let's see. I gotta get going, y'all. Uh, if the Saints defense holds opposing teams under twenty, they'll win every game. Yeah. Ah, Kelly Clarkson. Yep, yeah, that's the idea. All right, we're about to get out of here. What can what can else you do to explore Florida's defensive weaknesses? Um, intermediate passing game. Match up your big slot receivers uh, and maybe uh, Racy McMath at tight end on linebackers. I think that's your advantage. I don't think you're running straight at this team, and I do think they're good on the back end. Um, and I don't think LSU has proven to be great throwing the deep ball. So I'd say intermediate passing game. See, see that. Um, why are you beeping on Facebook Live? There's so much cursing on whiskey and wine. <laughs> different, different platforms, man. That's all. Whiskey and wine. You understand what you're coming in for. It's late at night. We're drinking. We're, uh, you know, post game. It's just what we're doing. Uh, it's just more. It's your morning. It's your morning commute. It's family show trivia. Family show. Come on out. All right. Um, I gotta go. Uh, to this meeting. Y'all have a great Monday. We will see you tomorrow. Boudreaux'mix.com. Pick up some Boudreaux's, boudreauxmix.com, and um, uh, we'll see you tomorrow and today on AFR. See you.